Hey everyone, in this video, we're diving into the world of Google Apps Script to automate email responses from your Google Forms. Imagine this, someone submits your form and they instantly receive a customized email based on their answers. I'm going to walk you through the code step by step so you can easily implement this automation for your own forms. And you can use this for RSVP confirmations, feedback surveys, and many other types of forms this trick will save you time and make your forms super efficient. So let's get started. First, let's create a new Google form by going to forms.new. And in this example, I'm going to create an RSVP form. So let's give that a title now of RSVP form. And let's click in the top left so our form gets a name as well. And now let's add a few questions to our form, starting with the responder's name. And let's change this from multiple choice to short answer. And let's make us a required question and add another question. And this is going to be called email address. It's already switched to short answer. Let's make this a required question as well. And also add some form validation for us. And we can set this to text contains email. And one last question for our RSVP form. This one will be a multiple choice question and let's call this, will you attend? And let's add all three of these options suggested here. Yes, no, and maybe. And again, let's make this a required question. Great, so we've got our simple form here. There's a couple of ways we could add app script to this form. One way is by going into the more options here and going into the app script script editor from here. Alternatively, we can go into responses. I'm going to link this form to a new Google Sheet. Let's press create and accept the default name. This Google Sheet is now linked to our Google Form and you can see here it's already completed the column headers for us and turned it into a nicely formatted table and all of our responses will appear in this Google Sheet, making it much easier to track our responses. But we can also attach our app script here by going into extensions and app script. So this is the Google app script editor. App script is a JavaScript based language that lets you automate tasks in Google workspace. And don't worry in this video, you don't need to be a coding expert to understand this. Okay, let's get started first by just giving our project a name. I'm going to call this form responses and let's let's rename. And now let's delete this code here and define our first function. And a function is just a reusable block of code for performing a specific task. And we're gonna call this function form response. And now let's type an open bracket and type in E. Now this is important. The E part means that a function expects to receive some information from the Google form when it's called. So in this case, E represents the form submission event, which is a package of data that the user submitted in the form. Okay, next, let's define our first variable. And I'm going to call this one results, and then take our E variable. And from E, we need to get named values. So named values, accesses the responses from within the E object, and it organizes the data based on the names of the questions in our form. So essentially, it creates a collection where you can access the answers by the corresponding question labels. And we'll look at how to do this next. So next, let's just write this information to the console log, which is useful for debugging and just making sure our code is working okay. So let's console log the results variable. Now, if I hit save, what I need to do next is configure a trigger because we want this function to run every time the form is submitted. And we can do this by going to the left-hand menu, selecting triggers, press add trigger down on the bottom right. Then we can choose which function to run. We've only got one. And for event source, we need from spreadsheet and event type, we need to change from on open to on form submit. 
And once we've changed that, we just need to press save. As this is the first time we're running this, we need to just confirm the account we're running this from and go through the consent screen and trust our form response. Okay, so now our trigger has been created. If we go back to our Google form, preview our form, and now let's enter some values into here. So let's enter my name and email address and select yes. And now let's press submit. And now if we go back to our app script at the top here, and now on the left-hand side, if we go into executions, we can see our function called form response has executed without any errors. It says complete under status. If we click here, we can see our form responses in an object. So here it's captured, uh, will we attend? Yes, it's captured our email address, our name, and it's also included a timestamp as well. And this has all been put into an object for us to use in our code. Great, so that's working. So let's go back to our code and finish writing this now. So let's go back into the editor. And now we need to define our variables. So first, let's start by getting the respondent's name. So we can do this by defining a new variable called name. Then we need to get the results and we need to access the answer associated with the name. So we can do that by using the square brackets and then typing in name, as that's what we named our name field in the form over here. So we can see that we've got name. And then we need to add another set of square brackets and zero to get the first item from our answer in case it includes multiple answers. And then in this case, when none of our questions do have multiple answers. Perfect, now let's do the same for email address. So we get the results again. This time we need to type in email address and be careful, this is case sensitive. Again, let's define zero here. I'm also this time going to convert it to lowercase just to avoid any issues with email addresses and use trim just to remove any leading or trading spaces from that email address. And now the last variable is going to be called attending. Again, let's get the results. And this question was called, we can check it over here. Will you attend? So let's just copy this over into here. And again, we're getting the first item from that array being provided for us. And for some extra debugging, we could add this to the console log for us when this code runs, just to check this is all working okay. So let's enter the name, email, and attending. And we should see that pop up in our console log when we next run this. Okay, so now we've got some data from our form. Now we need to create a function to actually send that email response. I've already got a function I've written for this earlier, so let's paste that in now and talk through what's happening in here. So here I've defined a new function called send email, which takes the name, email, and attending variables, and these values are what we are extracting from the form sponsors function. On the next line, I've got our subject defined as a variable here, and then we're defining another variable containing our message body. And this stores the email's content. So we start off saying hi, and then we're using the name variable here. And this is a template literal that dynamically inserts a person's name into our email greeting. Now slash n slash n, this creates two line breaks for us to add a bit of spacing to the email. And then if we go further down here, we've defined an if statement. So these are a series of conditional statements that customize the email based on the person's RSVP response. If attending equals yes, then the subject changes to you're confirmed. And in the body of a message, we're saying that we're excited to see you at our event. Alternatively, if the attending variable equals no, then we say, thank you for letting us know, and we hope to see you next time. And the last option here, if attending equals maybe, then we're saying we understand you might not be sure yet, but please let us know later. Let's just move this down a bit. And on the last line, 
This is the core line that actually sends the email. So in this case, we're using the Mail app, which is built into AppScript service for interacting with email. And send mail is a method of Mail app that actually sends the email for us. And it takes the recipient's email, the subject, and the body's argument we've already provided to it further up here. Before this will work, we actually need to call the send email function from our form responses function. So to do this, I'm going to put this into a try catch block. And we can start this by writing try. Then let's enter the name of a function we're going to call, which in this case is this one down here. So send email. In fact, I'm just going to copy and paste this into the try block for us. And now we need to add a catch. And essentially, the try catch structure is just used for error handling. So if we do encounter an error in the try block, then the code in the catch block will be executed. And in this case, we're just going to use console.error and then write the error, which will get caught in this variable here and write it into our console log so we can see any errors which pop up. But hopefully there won't be any. Okay, so let's save this now. And now let's go back to our form and submit another response. So let's type in a name and an email address. And let's say, yep, yeah, we are attending the event and press submit. Now, if we jump back into our app script and go to executions on the left-hand side, we can see our code is running. Let's hit refresh and that should have finished by now, hopefully. Okay, so it's saying that our script doesn't have authorization to send email. So that's because we need to recreate that trigger and just authorize it to enable email sending. So if we go back to our triggers on the left-hand side, I'm just going to edit this and save again. And let's just reauthorize this just because we made some changes to the script since we last authorized it. So let's press allow. And now let's go back and try sending that again and it should work this time. So let's enter my name, my email, and yep, we will attend and hit submit. And now if we go back over to our executions, we should see a success this time. Okay, so that appears to have run without any errors. Let's go and check my email account now. Okay, and here it is, we can see the test email has been successfully sent and delivered. This time, let's try submitting the form again by selecting one of the other responses just to make sure our if statement is working. So this time, let's add our address again and select no, we're not attending the event. Hit submit and we should see a different email response pop up. So let's select this email. And here we have a different message body this time, as you can see. And that's it. With just a few lines of code, you can automate your Google Forms processes, saving you time and effort. And this is just one example of sending an email message. You could have other code linked to this to update another Google Sheet somewhere, send a message to a Google Chat space, or even trigger actions on Google Workspace like uh, resetting a user's password or adding someone to a Google group. So this simple code has lots of options for potential usage in the future. So I hope this video is useful. If you do have any questions, then please do let me know in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.